Today I'm in Tumagna to meet author Helen Elizabeth, or Helen Matthews as you might know her, to discuss her racy debut novel, Saving Mina. I wondered where the name Mina came from. Um, I wanted a name that wasn't of a particular culture, so I was trying to find a name that um, a reader could interpret her as being, you know, from any culture really. Um, but also my favourite um, book is Dracula, Bram Stoker's Dracula, and the main character in that is Philomena, who is actually the shortened version of that is Mina, which is what she's called throughout the book. Um, and I just really like the name, to be honest, and I wanted my protagonist to have a name that I cared about. And the cover picture is perfect for your story. I had this vision of making her quite mysterious, that the reader actually interprets Mina as being somebody that could be them. Um, so I didn't want her face to be sh shown, but equally I wanted her to be sort of young and glamorous and um, everyone loves a hat, don't they? So... <laughs> Now, you have a busy career in education. When did it start, this idea of writing a book? So, um, I, I read um, English literature at university and um, the plan was always to be a writer. That was all I'd ever really wanted to do. And, um, and then I became an English teacher and had, I've had a phenomenal career as an English teacher and absolutely loved it. But I'd always wanted to write and about 10 years ago I thought, OK, let's, let's actually write a fun novel that I would like to read. Um, and that's where it started really. So I started writing it about 10 years ago um, just as a sort of an I a few ideas that I'd thrown about really. So that's what I was going to ask you, where did the idea, because you've got these two very strong, handsome men and <laughs> yes. this beautiful woman in the middle. So was that the idea right from the start, a love triangle, and then you embellished it? Or how did it, how did it begin? Yeah, I suppose the novel evolved. The, the idea came from um, a long, long time ago. I worked in a, a huge English department and one of the teachers had actually been invited to a wedding and she knew, she was single, and she knew that there were going to be quite a lot of eligible bachelors at this wedding. Um, and she decided that she would spend an enormous amount of money, pretty much a whole month's salary at that time, on an outfit that she was going to wear to this wedding to sort of catch a man, that was the plan. And she talked about it incessantly and we all had to look at the outfit, etc., etc. And it did work and she did marry, she met a guy and then married him and is happily married now. So that was the original idea. I thought, you know, what would it be like if you went to a wedding, you were feeling a bit fed up with your life and you thought, okay, let's go and, and see if I can sort of find a partner. But then I suppose the, the book evolved and Mina's adventures evolved over time. Um, and I think it's much more than that. So I think it starts as a bit of a chick flick, but I think as it goes on, you, you get the real sense of Mina's emotions and she goes through some hardships mm. um, and she has to ultimately make a decision by the end of the novel as to who she's gonna save. I was going to ask, so had you planned all that at the start as to be a bit more complicated or had that, did that actually develop as you wrote? I think I hadn't planned the ending and I hadn't planned all of the plot. I have to be honest, it became a bit of a guilty pleasure because I, you know, I'd, I'd think, right, tonight I'll put the children to bed and then I'll, I'll do some writing and, and quietly she sort of grew and she grew as a character and she grew into this person that I thought, well, I wonder what would happen if this happened or I wonder what would happen if that happened. Um, so I think by the end of the novel, I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd never planned the ending and I didn't know how it was going to end. And actually, I'm really pleased with the ending because I think um, ultimately, and I won't say what the ending is, but ultimately I think she makes the right choice at the end. It's funny, halfway through, I thought, I know where this is heading, but you didn't know. As you say, you know as the reader what you wanted to do. So I think yep. that's, it's cleverly written. Thank you. I deliberately kept both men quite shady characters. You know, we don't learn a lot about them. I don't think we need to because it's about her and the well, choices you know, that you know she makes. Well off. You know they're well off. You know they're handsome and you know that they're good at sex. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, and, you know, that, that's what she... And, and actually, she goes between them because they both got different, different 
points about them that are important, but ultimately, yeah, she makes a decision at the end, which I think is the right decision for her. And I'm quite proud of her at the end, really. She's certainly a, a woman with many facets, as you say. Yeah. Um, and one of those is that she actually enjoys sex. And you've written a few little hot sex scenes in there. Does that was that something you enjoy, or do you, when you're writing, you think, "Oh, somebody's going to read this"? Well, I think it's one of those where um, I suppose I, when I was at university, I I studied. Um, 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 African-American women writers and and they say it as it is and about real life and and you live through their characters and and sometimes you know there's some trauma that you live through and sometimes there's some fun bits that you live through too so I think that that's why I included it and um, and also I think it you know it was meant to be quite a lot of fun and it was meant to be a book that women would want to read and would enjoy reading and um, and why not? And it's actually a book about friendship. Friendship. Well. And, and their friendship is tested. The best friend goes through a lot of yeah, she tough does. times with Mina, trying to keep her on track. Absolutely. And, and it's been really interesting that people have contacted me and a lot of people have said, we absolutely love Nicole's character. And, you know, gosh, you know, I'd love a friend like Nicole to keep me on the straight and narrow and make sure everything's fine and pick me up and dust me down and, and all those cat. things and look after <laughs> the cat. And she turns up at all the right moments mm. in She's her life. She's all the way through. But actually, in a funny way, she hasn't got a lot of space in the novel, but she pervades it. Yeah. And their relationship is actually key. Absolutely, and they cover for each other, and because um, she's quite needy at times, Mina. She's actually at times I thought I ended up actually being really annoyed by her a few times. Yeah, she is quite needy, and <laughs> does she really need a man? Why exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can't you just get on? And 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 she makes some decisions that Nicole doesn't make because Nicole can't make those. And for many women, you know, you have to you make decisions based on the situation you're in at that time, you know, if you've got a family or if you've got children or whatever. So she, Mina has a lot more freedom than Nicole, but yeah, Nicole is a best friend in the I best mean, what way. What I, I love about the book is actually you don't bring in extraneous characters. No. There's basically, there's, there's Mina's mum, but yeah. apart from that, we have the four main characters really. And as you said, it's an internal narrative. Yeah. And what you do switch, you switch from Mina's internal to one of the males. It, it, yep. As a man reading it, I thought, great, I'm, I'm actually, you know, yep. we have feelings too. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And and I wanted to make it, uh, um, and I don't know whether I've achieved this, but I wanted to make it quite mysterious. So you don't really know always what's happening with the male characters and who's important and who's yeah. not important and what they're thinking because, you know, they come in and out of her life um, and she makes decisions between them and goes back to one and, and whatever. And, um, and that was important too. Yeah. You hinted there there might be another novel, not well. Nicole, but, but are you <laughs> planning or have you already started? No, I haven't started and, um, and I'm not sure yet and whether or not. So it's been interesting. Some people have said we want to know what happens to Mina next. Um, whether I will or you've not, left, I don't you've know. You've left an open ending, of course. Yeah, it is. <laughs> well, in some ways it's an open ending, but in other ways, I, I brought it to a conclusion. So I don't want anyone to think that there isn't an ending because mm. that's really frustrating, isn't it? When you watch something and you think, oh, there's another series on the way, whatever. Mm. So there is an ending, but yes, you're right. There's you a could, possibility of... You could continue yeah, it yeah. if you wanted to. Um, what have you enjoyed most about this process? Um, I think when I'm writing, and, and I, don't, I haven't, don't just write this, I've written children's books and things which I've not mm. done anything with. I think I feel very free when I'm writing and um, I enjoy writing. And like I said, it became a guilty pleasure because I, was, I would go in, you know, somewhere quiet in the house for a couple of hours and totally immerse myself. Um, and I loved that. Mm. I, and it, but when you work full time, and I've got three children, I've got a busy life, I've now got a dog rather than a cat. Um, you know, there's very little time for most of us to actually do something just for us. Mm -hmm. And that's what writing is, it's something just mm -hmm. for me, really. But it, you say it's just for you, but it's quite a brave thing then to put this personal, the way you express things, the way you use language, the way you view the world is in there. Yeah. And you're putting it out. So 
did you have any re reservations about it? Yeah, lots. And I was very nervous about it. And um, I'd spent a lot of time thinking about, you know, trying, you know, doing the usual traditional route where you try and find an agent, etc. And, and that was very frustrating. And, um, and then I thought, well, OK. And I had a friend who a couple of years ago did a very similar thing, put a book out there and is now on her sixth book. Um, and, and so I contacted her and said, look, is it, it you know, is it a goer? Is it, would, does it work? And, and she was very, you know, supportive and said, yeah, just do it. And um, so it, it took me probably a year from beginning to deciding to do it to actually launching it in January, simply because it's actually quite a complicated process to do it yourself because you're editing it yourself, you're making sure it's accurate, you're um, understanding the software with Amazon and they try and help, but you know, equally, you need quite you know, technical IT skills to be able to do it. And then there was the thought, what if everybody hates it? Um, what if, you know, people just say, well, you know, because there right, there's hundreds of thousands of books on Amazon. So from my perspective, it was quite scary. But then I sent it to you probably, I started off with a very small circle of friends. I let read it before I published it. And I said to them, be very honest. And then they really liked it. So I widened the circle to different types of people and they really liked it too. And I thought, okay, let's just do this. Um, that must which be is a great. lovely feeling that your work is out there. You put all this time in and thought, and yep. actually, you're actually connecting with people now. Does yep. anyone write to you? Do you hear from anybody? Um, one friend said to me that they weren't feeling very well and they'd phoned in sick to work and they'd taken a, a cup of tea back to bed and saw my book on the side and picked it up and sort of read it in a whole sitting and couldn't put it down and 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 sort of and then at the end of the day messaged me and said oh my goodness it was just amazing I thoroughly enjoyed it and that's really nice because then you think well actually it achieved what it set out to achieve I'm a, really. I'm a pretty slow reader and what I appreciated were actually that most of the chapters are really short yeah but you're left wanting to go on yeah. so actually for me it was really encouraging and again because it wasn't complicated characters I don't mean this in a horrible way it was an easy read yeah but a really enjoyable read yeah so and I'm that's what I you know I, and I didn't set out to do that but the sort of fiction I like to read is the same. And obviously I've got an English literature degree, so you know, I've read a lot of fiction. I like books I can literally get out of my bag, read a chapter on a short journey. I don't want a chapter that's, you know, 25 pages of description. That doesn't suit me or my lifestyle. So I need books that are, I have an emotional connection to, that's got some plot and I can, you know, and you care about the people. And you care about the people in the book. And that's mm. that's what I like. Now, this book, as you just said, you're a lot of your life's in London. Did you grow up in London? No. Oh, right, right. No, yeah. I grew up in Bristol. Oh, did you? And, um, I didn't know you were a Bristol girl. Yeah, oh. grew up in South Bristol. Yeah. And most of my teaching career has been in Bristol. Ah. This book is mainly based in London. You go to some other exotic places like New York and Greece and whatever. But if there was a sequel, could you imagine writing a story about a North Somerset village? Oh, yeah, that would be a really good one to do, actually, wouldn't it? <laughs> and um, I think what I love about this village is that actually the village is, is full of doctors, but it's also full of really creative people in this village. And that's what I like about it. Um, I think it's a very special place, actually. But yeah, you could potentially have all sorts of things that go on in this village behind closed doors, couldn't you? <laughs> Helen's book, Saving Mina, is available in both print and Kindle versions from Amazon.